Hi friend, this is Home Keepers. Come right on in. So glad to be with you today. Is this your first time to visit us? I want you to know you are so welcome and I'm about to spill things here. Uh, grab yourself a hot cup of tea and join us. Uh, we have been a very interesting time this week. Uh, this program has been on the air almost 20 years. Can't believe it. And uh, this is the third time that we've used the same guest for the whole week. And reason being, the subject is so interesting and so important. And our guest knows the subject so well. In fact, she's written a book on the book of Revelation out of the Bible. And if uh, you're a Bible scholar at all, I think a lot of people stumble through uh, the book of Revelation, but Jody has written it called Revelation Simply Put. And as we have gone over this each day, I think the program yesterday, actually, uh, I think we both got a little bit excited thinking about the end times and Jesus coming back to earth and all the things that are going to happen, happen that are outlined in the Bible that we'll actually have our cell phones and our iPads and tablets and whatever we carry around, we can see instantly what's happening in the plan of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is exciting stuff. And so uh, this is the fourth day that we'll be talking about this and there'll be one more day. And so I hope you haven't missed any, but um, if it will be eventually on YouTube and you can watch it. And so... I know that you're interested in this kind of thing, and I'm so glad for the opportunity to just sit down for five solid days and talk about something that I believe we're witnessing right now with all the earthquakes and, and the distress of nations and just the unbelievable things that are happening rapidly, very rapidly, people against people and mass murders and so forth. These things lead up to that time when Jesus is going to come down and rule this earth for 1,000 years. And that kind of thing's not going to happen when he's here. So that's what we're talking about. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make a, a bunk cake breakfast. Uh, I don't know if it's well named or not, but when you see it, I think you'll want it. And I'm anxious to taste it, so we'll fix it. But before I do join her, again, we're offering this book, maybe the best bargain ever on Home Keepers, $20 for this book. And you can have it by calling 1-800-229-0059 or write to me at Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I have a feeling that for many people who love the Word of God and have had a little difficult time with Revelation, you'll get an awful lot out of this book. Very good investment, I think, for your spiritual life. All right. Um, hope you'll take advantage of that. And I have joined Stephanie. And, you know, I love a lot of things about her, about you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but she's got this little girl quality. And um, about the end of August, she just gets ready for Christmas. <laughs> do you have something? I do. She, Look what I she got. She started her I'm shopping, so friends. This, for my grandchildren first and of my October. adopted grandchildren. Look, at I got them all Christmas pajamas. you got to get pictures of them coming down the Is staircase. Is that not the cutest look? So we have a Nash mm -hmm. and we have... We got that one, and then they come in green, too. I got little Gavin. Yeah, and you know, I think you're smart to do this so early. So I, what I do is I give them to them on Thanksgiving night. Mm -hmm. I, I'll have that. I'll have a mug with their initial on it. I'll have a Santa hat, um, the Christmas story book, and I'll have, and they'll they'll get. I'll, I'll have their parents put it on their beds Transition. when they go to bed. Yeah. Yep. yep. So that's, that's a great idea. I'm excited. All right. <laughs> okay, okay, I know so, this is my job. Yes, you're spraying the pan. I'm supposed to have a dozen eggs, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> it looks so, like mine is one. <laughs> well, what happened this morning, as I cracked my eggs, I'm going to tell you what happened. In other words, it's not my fault. It's my fault. This morning, I'm, in, I'm down here minding my own business, putting all this together. <laughs> I got everything put in the pan and just a hundred other things on my mind, and I thought... <laughs> For some reason, that I could pick the pan she up by up the, the center, <laughs> and, and it had all these raw eggs went in it. everywhere. And I was like, Stephanie, yeah, get but it, it still together, turned out together, girl. Do you want me to open this? Yes, please. So I had to transfer it to another pan. So don't do that. Just don't pick it up by yeah. the center. It's crazy. Well, where's the thing? Right there. Yep. So I made a okay. big mess. Had to use extra eggs. 
because they all spilled so out. So we're all minus over the place. one for the show. So we're minus. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> one time we didn't have one open, and ever since then, I have really She's let. mad at now, the biscuits. Now, did you cut these up? Yes. Okay. In what? She is Quarters? mad at the bit. No, like even smaller. Really? Yeah. And I didn't even use all of them because those are just pile them on top. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, I didn't even use them all this morning because that those are really big biscuits. So this is a dozen eggs. If there's Quarter anything I think our viewers learn is don't pay that much attention to the recipe. We always just do it do the way your we thing. want. It. Yeah. Okay. So and you can do just a couple more of those biscuits. Will a couple be enough? Well, I, I left three out. Actually. Okay. I'm uh, just separating them a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. So then I have diced ham. I have two cups of cheese. And I have Boom. frozen tater tots. That this bread, this one's different. Okay, this one's different. This because, is an odd recipe. Yeah, a usual breakfast casserole. You know, it's usually the eggs, the the bacon, the cheese, and stuff. But this one has biscuits and tater tots inside. So that's it's going to be different, and it's really pretty. It's a yes. great Christmas morning. That's the first thing I thought of was, yeah. and you 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 could. Um, Easily put it together the night before, couldn't you? Yeah, I would leave the tater tots out the night before because they're really supposed to stay frozen. Oh, are they? Yeah. So um, there's ham. Let me move these. This reminds me, I cut up bread every night for the ducks. Yeah. I have about eight to ten ducks that meet me at five o'clock. They're not afraid of me anymore. Didn't you say one day you came home they were like angry? <laughs> they were angry because I got there at six and they were like... You're late. <laughs> like, I thought, were well, you bread? ungrateful? <laughs> Arthlene Rippy. Okay, two cups of frozen tater tots. That was two cups of um, cheese. I'm telling you, you can learn so much from animals. You remember that awful tsunami in Indonesia years ago? Mm hmm. The, the elephants went up the mountain three they days were running. before. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so these are just cut up biscuits. She got the good grand southern home style well, that's biscuits. That's what they do. Is that so. enough? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So all you do is you mix this all up. And you put it in a bump pan and you bake it for like 400 I degrees still for say 45 the, minutes. This is the most unusual. It bakes a little bit longer because it has biscuits and tater tots in it. And look at that. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's just beautiful. I'd probably put look a little. That. I'd probably put a little salt and pepper in here. For and it's me. got your. You know, it's got your eggs and your it's, ham. And, it's your whole entire breakfast. And your toast. Yes. Oh, does it ever cut nicely? Yeah. It looks beautiful even after I messed it up this morning. Look oh, at this that. Is fun. Oh, and it's ooey gooey with the cheese. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Do not pick it up by the center. I command you to order this because this is nothing like this. Messy. Oh, don't pick it up jumpers. by the core of the pan. Do not pick it oh. up by the center. Hold on, I made a mess. This is one great recipe. Aye, yeah, yeah. Here, I'm going to turn this around. <laughs> and it's there. called a, a bunt cake breakfast. Make sure you put bunt in there because we've had other breakfast casseroles, mm -hmm. so make sure you put bunt in there. I can't tell you how awesome that is. All in one fell swoop. Mm. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll want this. There's a lot of occasions. Yummy. You can, this make a good. This make a good brunch. Uh, even we like to have breakfast for dinner, dinner sometimes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the information come up, up on the screen, how to get this, and then you're going to hear me talking to Jody again. It's good time. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Right, Jody, uh, you've been what? Well, this is our fourth day in a row, and we're wearing the same clothes, but <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing it all at the same time because when she came, I, I we had a couple shows planned, and when I got into the material, I said, "No, you know, she lives in Detroit, we're in Florida. We we got to make a whole week out of this." So, yes. I am so glad to have you. You've just been a favorite guest for years, Thank you. and. Um, on the last program, I'd like to recap that a little bit. Right at the end, we were talking about the yes. fact that the Antichrist would really fool Israel. Yes. Make a, a peace treaty, right? Yes, correct. With them. Um, 
And here's, you know, God's chosen people. Jesus came through the Jewish line and all, and they're going to be deceived. Pick it up there. Let's pick up. I'm going to read a portion out of my book, if that's okay. Sure. Page 102. Here is the part that the Antichrist plays. It's funny, he has a purpose, mm -hmm. but it's, it plays into God's purpose. The assimilation of Israel's history can best be described in brief summary commencing in the book of Judges. Remember when Israel would be disobedient? God then delivered them into the hands of their enemies, their adversaries. But all of these calamities were designed only as chastisement, a course of correctional discipline by which God brought his people to see and repent of their errors. And then after that, God would raise up judges. As stated throughout the book of Judges, as it was in ancient times, so shall it be in the last days for Israel. The Antichrist, Israel's adversary, shall stand in the glorious land of Jerusalem in hopes of consuming the Jewish people, as Zechariah the prophet says. And this time, when he tries to annihilate the Jewish people, tries to cause a holocaust like his prototype Hitler did, mm -hmm. uh, the Jewish people would then cry back out to God, Lord, save us, Lord, save us. And guess what? This time, God won't raise up a judge. God will send a king who the king of the Jews will come to deliver Israel out of the hand of the enemy. And this is awesome because the Jews is who bring Jesus back for the second coming, or Yeshua. Isn't it most beautiful uh -huh. in, in Hebrew, Yeshua? And this is awesome. Matthew chapter 23, verse 39. Let's give some scripture here. Jesus told his Jewish audience, his disciples, who were the first Christians, they were also Christians, he told them, I will not return until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He is saying that the Jewish nation, they're going to accept their Messiah, and they're going to say, Bless, <laughs> finally, after all these years, Slow learners. blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, which brings Jesus back out of heaven as their king of the Jews. God won't send a judge. He sends the, the king of the Jews to annihilate, guess what, the Antichrist. This is awesome, too. Jesus is going to fight so much for Israel. The revelation tells us that he will annihilate the army who tries to annihilate Israel, as that is a covenant in the book of Genesis. Whoever will bless you, I will bless. Mm -hmm. Whoever will try to harm you, God will also harm them. When he comes, Revelation says the war is going to be so bloody, bloody, the war of Armageddon, that it, the blood will rise to a horse's bridle. But guess what? Jesus does not even kill the Antichrist there. He takes the Antichrist and the false prophet, Revelation chapter 19, he takes them and preserves them. He kills the army, and he takes them and throws them alive into the lake of fire. Now, that's something right there. Yeah. That, wait, well, and I'll tell you why he takes them. Here it is, which matches up with another verse in our scripture. The reason why he preserves them and do not kill them during the war of Armageddon is because before the Antichrist gets thrown into the lake of fire, before the false prophets get thrown into the lake of fire, they shall bow unto the king of kings, for every knee shall bow every knee. and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. When they bow unto him, now they are thrown into the lake of fire. Glory, <laughs> hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. The Antichrist and the false prophet shall bow before they're thrown into Amen. the lake of fire. We have bowed right now, but... I just like hearing that part because they cause so much havoc in the earth. And Jesus exactly. is going to get rid of them because, during the millennium. Because Israel fell, <laughs> fell for an agreement, a pact. Yes, they did. With the, with the Antichrist. With the Antichrist for seven years. And look, he's going to break it, though, during the mid-year tri mid tribulation. That's why you hear the days, 1,260 days, 42 months. The Antichrist only has power according to Revelation chapter 13, for 42 months, 1,260 days, the last end of history, he has power. Yeah, what about all the other nations? Uh, it's, doesn't the Bible kind of indicate that the whole world is going to look upon this guy and think he's great? The whole world will, but guess what? All is not going to go well for him. Daniel tells us when he gets in office, 
it says the kings of the East are going to push against them. Guess what? North Korea not only pushes against America, they're also going to push against the enemy. Everybody's going to want to be the superpower of the world. So I, I think a lot of people think it's going to be smooth selling. If you, for him, for, for a him, while. it's not going to be smooth selling. The Bible says too, a number of other kings are going to say, "We're not. We don't want to be with you." Don't forget, it's ten horns, ten heads. Some of them are going to say, "I don't want to be in power with you." Then it says the kings of the east are going to be coming, saying, "We're." the superpower of the world. What about those that don't want to? Is there any uh, spiritual reason or they just, everybody wants their own power? Everybody wants their own power. The world would be haywire. They don't have oh, Jesus. Yeah. So they're going to say, we're king of the earth. What does Satan do? He fights against himself. We think it's bad now. We think it's bad now. <laughs> you, you, I'm like, people, you better get on this train right now. That means confess Jesus is Lord right now so you don't have to be in the tribulation. And let me, let me give this, this, this caveat as well. Those who are left behind, okay, there will be opportunity for you to be saved, but more than likely, you will be killed during that time. Mm -hmm. Because anyone who does not worship the beast, the Bible makes that very clear, you're going you're gonna to be killed and you'll just immediately come to heaven. You'll come join us then. Because afterwards, there are going to be people who are going to say, I missed it. I'm going to confess Christ now. But your chances of living during that seven-year tribulation period where one-fourth of the earth is going to be perishing. And the Bible says if Jesus didn't come back, everyone would die because everybody is going to be going haywire. The Antichrist is going to be trying to annihilate the Jews. Then you have North Korea saying, we're kings of the earth. Then you have Russia saying, no, we're the kings of the earth. Yeah. I mean, everybody is going to be trying to take king full power until Christ prepares to bring in his kingdom. But the Antichrist will have majority of the power, which is given to him by Satan, not God. But yeah. God oversees it Jody, and allows let's it. Just take a second and ask the viewers yeah. to accept the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. People of God, or those of you who do not know Christ, today, today is your time. You don't have to fear any of this. There's a beautiful story written, the story of Israel and their king. And this king also loves all of humanity. And the Bible makes it very clear. If you believe on him, he will save you. God sent him specifically here for you. So we're not going to be complicated. The Bible makes it very clear. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that includes you, believes in him. Well, you're saying, well, what should I believe? That he came to earth for Israel and to complete their story? You should believe that he died on the cross for you and my sins. You should believe the story that he went to the grave. And guess what? Here's the most magnificent part. He got back up after three days. That's the story you need to believe. If you truly believe that, you are saved. The Bible says he, he, you won't be disappointed on the day of judgment. He's going to save you because what? You now become in his hand. You become also the bride of Christ. Will a man who love his wife beat her and throw her into tribulation? No. And Christ said, when you become my wife, when you become in my hand, no one will be able to pluck you out. He will protect you. He will guide you. Amen. He will save you. Accept him now. Accept him now. Yes, Amen. and you just talk to him exactly the way Jody has been talking to you. That's prayer. That's a communication. Yes. And I always like to encourage people to get into a good Bible teaching church. Uh, this is, you've entered a new life if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ today. But it is a life. It's an exciting life. I never, ever regretted one Me moment. either. I oh. love it. I believe everything. You can tell I believe everything because I've even gotten into his last book. <laughs> like, I believe, I believe. And people think that, oh, they might look at us and say that we're crazy. I tell them you're crazy for believing in zombies. Yeah. Okay? So you're not yeah. going to re <laughs> rebuff my story. With, if you believe in a zombie, I have every right to believe in my Savior, mm -hmm. my blessed Savior, who is not a zombie. He a is very much coherent. For, for your Savior. Too. Yeah, and has a hand in my life. So... You know, go ahead and believe in your God. I believe in my God, but trust me, come on over and here. You, and you know, sitting here talking powers. to you, I, I feel so thankful hmm. that he didn't leave us here to wander through the dark. He told us. He revealed what's going to happen. 
And uh, then he sends Jody to make it easier for people like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rosalind. Yeah. You know what? That's what the title means, Revelation. I even for explain Arthur that Lane. in the book. You should have put For Arthur Lane on here instead for, of simply put. I'm going to put on here, yes, For Arthur Lane. But the title itself <laughs> says it means to take the covers off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and everybody's like, we're in the dark. Nobody knows. I'm like, the yeah. book itself yeah. says, take the covers off. Here is everything that's going to happen. Who wouldn't serve a God to tell you yeah, what's going to happen and in the end times? We are offering times? this book on Homekeepers, <laughs> and we want to put the information on the screen. Uh, it's yours. This is a great book, and it's full color for that gift of at least uh, $20 to the program. The number for your credit card is on there and also the address if you want to write to us. Um, it's been a long time since I've been this excited mm -hmm. about, about the end times. And I'll, t I'll be honest with you, some of it's the weather uh, mm -hmm. that is so unpredictable. As, as I mentioned on one program, we've just come through Hurricane Irma and it, it just devastated parts of Florida and uh, people are still hurting, picking up from. And also, the Bible says that nation will rise against nation. We have so much turmoil oh, yes. around the world when it comes to nations. Um, it's happening right before our lives. And you mentioned on one program, and I remember it. I was a little girl. You don't remember it, but I remember yeah. when Israel became a state. Wasn't that magnificent? Oh, May 14th, 1948. Small. I was very small, but everybody yes. was so excited that we live when we are watching this stuff happen. We don't have to anticipate and get excited. We're living in it for sure. I can't believe my eyes are seeing it too, Arthelene. Mm -hmm. When Israel became a nation, that fulfilled Ezekiel 36. That was big. <laughs> can these dry bones live? Everybody thought Israel isn't mm -hmm. in the land. When they went back to their land and it was known as, and then they hit the 1967 war. Right. You're like, God, wait a minute, hey, what are you? this sounds familiar. That's what started, yeah, this sounds familiar. And it's like, oh my goodness, wait a minute, is this happening before us that Israel is allotted back at, look, she hadn't been in the land mm -hmm. since they walked with their king. Jesus was walking in the land. Mm -hmm. And after he left, shortly after he left, John is banished to the Isle of Patmos. He's no longer in the land. All of the saints are scattered. Understand the story. And now once everyone is scattered, it's like no one's in the land mm -hmm. again. And then you have all the Christian crusades. Everybody, and guess what? Everybody's been trying to take over that land. I know, that, that's that God said, told Abraham, it is to you that I'm going to give this land. And guess what? God hasn't forgotten it. Nope. He's going to bring it back. And during the millennium, Israel will have the land. Um, I was just thinking uh, about <laughs> the fact that I've been privileged to live and to see a lot of this happen. Uh, some of you know I was a minister of music for many years, and I big programs. We did our programs Christmas and Easter down at the Pacific Auditorium. Wow. Really tried to bring the story of Jesus to life. But one of the favorite things I ever directed was the big choir and an orchestra with screaming trumpets and the the verse of that song said, signs of the times are everywhere. There's a brand new excitement in the air. Keep your eye upon the eastern sky. Lift up your head. Your redemption draws nigh. That should be the attitude of the Christian. This stuff should excite us and telling us where to look because that's where he's coming. That's, he's coming to that eastern sky. I'm so glad you said that. Can <clears throat> I chime in on that when you mm -hmm. say keep your head looking up. Yeah. This also, why we should not fear revelation and the antichrist, uh, because the Bible always tells us, look for the Christ, mm -hmm. not the antichrist. The Bible never tells the saints, That's please a great look point. for the antichrist. <laughs> that is a great point. The Bible always tells us, saints, keep your mm -hmm. head looking up mm -hmm. for your redemption draws nigh. He's always uh, telling us, commanding us, look for the Christ, the Christ. Now really stop and try and mm -hmm. say that. So when I hear, you know, we're going to stay down here and you know, this is the, and I'm like, <laughs> the antichrist is coming. I'm like, why is there so much talk about mm -hmm. the antichrist? He only has two chapters in here. Uh, yeah. Chapter six, chapter 13. And Other than that, from Genesis to Revelation, everything about else, Jesus. yes, everything else yeah. is about Je the Revelation one and one starts off the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so everybody is scared about the Antichrist. I'm not worried about the Antichrist. I'm, I'm looking for, as, as uh, one of my uh, mentors said, I'm looking for the upper taker, not the undertaker. Uh -huh. <laughs>
<laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to put it. Uh, got a couple minutes. Uh, the role of the church, um, I think the church is going to be persecuted uh, because it is being persecuted around the world. Some people are being tortured yes. and being killed. In America, we get up really upset if Starbucks changes its cup, and we call that <laughs> persecution, you know. And uh, I've, I've been reprimanded for saying happy holidays, like that's a persecution on the American church. Well, holiday means holy day. And so, so true. grow up, so American true. Christians, and look around the world. We have people. We have Christians being burnt in cages. They are being tortured. They are being killed. They're being murdered in other parts of the world. And that is a part of the end time. However, it's the end time for us right now. Yes. <laughs> so yes. No, no. I mean our program. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready to go into another one, man. Yeah, I, I, see, I have a clock right in front of me. Otherwise, there's no way to shut this girl. <laughs> but we're going to pick it up on the next program. I want to talk about the, the role of the church and uh, what the Bible has to say about it, really what's happening right now. So you stay there. Uh, I have got a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye, and she'll be with me for one more program. Okay? Stay there. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. All right. I, I know that as you watch that, you can pick up the excitement of the fact that Jesus is coming back. And you know, that's something the church really, truly needs to be experiencing. And I'm so thankful that uh, Jody wrote this book. Let me show it to you one more time because we're offering it for that gift of at least $20 to the program. Uh, you can use your credit card with that 800 number or you can write to me and we'll be glad to get it out to you. But the important thing is that we've brought up a very important subject for the church and for the believer. And uh, many people, sadly, in the church have not even heard this message that you're hearing from Jody Matthews this week. But it's important that the church know it and that the, the path that is being taken. And so hope you'll be sure and join us next time. And But until then, please remember there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.